Hey everyone, it's Eric here, and today I want to make this video in uh, kind of reaction to the federal election uh, results, the outcome. Uh, I feel, I'm not going to go into like, you know, who got it right and who got it wrong. I'm going to go into the fact that there is a group of people that don't feel like they have been heard. There's a group of people that don't feel like the government, or they're being well served by the government. Okay, these are the libertarian types. These are the PPC. They're more um, freedom thinkers. They 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 kind of want to fix the system. They they see that it's broken. I'm a libertarian. I see that there's a problem in the financial um, system, and I think it's broken. And my solution is becoming your own bank. Now, this is why I want to present this to you. Okay. This is, if you think like this, if you think like you're underserved, if you feel like, you know, government spending is out of control, then this is for you. Because this was, this is what I have implemented in my, my life, and it is fantastic. Um, and, I'll, and I'm going to go into reasons why. So please take the time to watch this. Now, and when I say become your own bank, I literally mean get the commercial banks out of your life. And how is that going to help you? Okay, you may, you probably put a lot of eggs in the basket in terms of like um, electing someone who's going to change things for you. And that didn't pan out because there's a group of people, the two big parties have so much uh, control that um, everyone votes their way. Okay, one or the other. Uh, so, so for for libertarian type of person to actually um, feel like they're going to make change, I believe it has to be done on the micro level. It's not going to be done on the macro level. We could create change through every individual within this kind of movement to enact this type of plan. Now, it's not going to fix certain things about the mask mandate. No, obviously not. But there are other elements of the platform of a libertarian that clearly can be fixed with this on the micro level. We don't need the government to, to fix our problem. We don't need the government to fix that problem. We could operate outside of the system and be very well served. Okay, so let me get into this. So what I literally am saying is cut the banks out of your life. So for example, I want to buy a car. You know, I get twenty thousand dollars. I take it out of my bank. Um, say I bank at one of the big banks, and then I go to the person selling the car and I give him twenty thousand dollars. Okay. He in turn takes the money and puts it into his bank. The bank is at the center of that entire transaction. Okay, and this is what I literally want to eliminate. I want to be able to say I'm selling that car. I want to take that $10,000 and deposit it into my bank, my personal bank. I want to cut that line off, that that circle that goes from um, the buyer, takes from his bank, gives it to the seller who puts it in his bank. And if, they're two, if those two people are banking at the same place, if I just write a check for $20,000, the bank literally never left, the money literally never left the bank. The bank just owes someone else the same amount of money. So I'm trying to cut them out completely. And that's where we progress on a micro level. So who is this good for libertarian, conservative, kind of freedom thinkers, anyone concerned with government spending, fractional reserve banking, uh, which goes into higher inflation, uh, anyone who's concerned with higher taxes, the government can only... Uh, it, it does not sell a service or sell a product. Its only form of revenue is through taxation. So if, if you're worried about inflation, which is the hidden tax, or direct taxation, this is for you because you kind of get out of the system. The deemed disposition rule, like, my gosh, anyone who has RSPs, they're in bed with the government. And when you pass away, the government is going to take half of your money. So you don't want that. You don't want to be in bed with the government. We want to opt out of the system. Anyone who invests in real estate, it's a no-brainer. Anyone who has a business, no-brainer. 
Why? Because you're always going to need capital to invest in more real estate, to to buy maybe capital investments. Say, I don't know, you're a dentist, you want to buy equipment, or you're a farmer, you need to buy a tractor. You need to have your own bank. And if you keep going to the commercial banks, they win. But if you have your own personal bank, you win because you get to recapture that interest. It doesn't go to outsiders. It stays within um, you and your family. And anyone who wants to um, focus on intergenerational wealth, and I'm not talking about leaving a million dollars. I'm talking about education. I'm talking about showing your kids and then the next generation how they too can opt out of the system and not depend on the government. Okay, so I think this is for everyone, but everyone won't do it. Okay, so the problem is Canadians don't have enough disposable income. Why? Because it goes through, it goes to taxes and it goes to debt servicing, it goes to taxes and interest. Okay, that is the real crux of the problem. So, about 70 to 80 percent of your money goes to outsiders goes to the government and goes to banks. We want to fix that. And if you might and you might tell me Eric, I don't believe you. That's not true. Well, based on the Fraser Institute, 42% goes to taxes. And when you that's when you talk about the your marginal tax bracket, HST, property tax, capital gain, you know, liquor tax, all sorts of taxes. Taxes everywhere. Gas tax, 42% vanishes. Okay? And we want to pay less tax. Second, we want to pay less interest. So if you're your own bank, you're paying yourself the interest. So you're recapturing the interest you pay. And you might argue with me, Eric, I don't pay 40% in tax in, in interest. You may pay 1% interest and you're very proud of that. But in reality, if, you're, if you have like a $2,000 mortgage, something like that, Maybe nine hundred or thousand dollars is going towards interest. So no, you're not paying a thirty percent interest, but the volume of interest in relation to your income is close to thirty percent, which is insane. Okay, which is insane, and we need to recapture that. So, so what's the problem? the The financial industry is going to tell you that you should invest ten percent. So. The problem is you're not saving enough. The problem is this and that. But if you focus on the 90% that's leaving your family and forget about that 10%, which would tell you put in mutual funds and invest, um, put in the stock market, and you know, you'll know you get a more risk, more return, right? That's what they're going to tell you. But if you focus on the big picture, we all know that the, the iceberg that sunk the sunk the the Titanic. It wasn't the peak that was sticking out of the water that they hit. They hit the stuff that was under the water. Okay, that's what sunk it, and that's what's sinking Canadians. Okay, the iceberg. That is so obvious. It's interest and debt. All their money goes to these two entities, and we need to recapture that. Okay. Just to you know, say it again, in a different way, I guess. The financial services industry is say, you know, turn on the tap. You have to make more money. You have to make more money to to get ahead. And that's not true. You have a bucket and you have water coming into the bucket and and you got holes in the bucket. The holes are taxes, interest, all this stuff. And the solution is to plug the holes. It's not increase the flow of water, okay? We need to plug plug the holes and tackle the 90% of the money that's leaving your family. And forget about just focusing on just that 10%. Okay. The second problem is is speaks to the libertarian again type macro level, central banks, uncontrolled government spending, inflation due to money printing, fractional reserve banking through uh, commercial banks are cr- increasing the cost of living. Okay. And then you can't get ahead. So don't tell me there's no inflation or this is transitory. You've all seen housing prices, okay? Now, now inflation is at 4%. These policies, these policies create the boom and bust cycles, okay? And you can vote in to try to get a smaller government, but most people 
are enticed by all the benefits, so the chances of that are happening are very slim. That's the problem. Now, how? what is the solution? How are we gonna get around this? Now, I can't, this won't address, obviously, like, you know, the mask mandate and vaccine passports, clearly. Um, becoming your own bank is not gonna solve that problem. But it will solve many items within the the platform, the PPC plat platform, the libertarian platform, by um, by being more fiscally responsible. It'll fix. It'll help the economy by you being a better citizen um, and managing your money better, and um, and you, by reducing the demand for central banks, you could. I mean. On a micro level, it seems insignificant. But if a lot of people did this, you you might be able to see some change. This is what I'm hopeful for. So part of the solution is going going to the gold gold standard. That needs a politician or some people to enact that policy. Not going to happen. We've just went through an through an election, and no one cares. Uh, but well, the the large majority of people don't care. Okay. I'm going to skip to the 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 third point there get rid of central banks, which is pretty much a piggy bank of the government to borrow and just keep creating, um, just keep growing out of control. The government's enormous, okay? And uh, we need to get rid of central banks. Is that gonna happen? Probably not, okay? Because you need a politician, because you need someone in government, and people are not gonna vote this type of policy in. It's just not gonna happen. Number two, allow privatized banking and 100% reserve banking and remove the inflationary financial um, fractional reserve banking. So if we, part of the platform of the PPC was to reduce inflation target from 2% to zero. And inflation is created through the central banks. So if we reduce the demand on the central banks and we cut the bank banking function um, and we control the banking function and get them out of our lives, we could reduce that demand and go more on a micro level, individually, on a micro level, operate within a 100% banking, um, reserve banking uh, system, individually. We will each individually operate on a 100 reserve banking system. Now, but there's no banks out there that actually offer full reserve banking. So what am I suggesting here? Okay. So we understand two of those need politicians. One of them does not. And why we are going to attack that one is because it creates inflation. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide. But the idea is we get rid of inflation. When you get a raise, it actually means you got a raise, right? Because everyone's like I literally saw a Bloomberg, a Bloomberg article saying that, well, 4% inflation, but good thing uh, we got minimum wage at 15% because you know now, now they're making more so they could pay for these higher items. Like it doesn't click in to the vast majority of people that if you just did not have inflation, when you got a raise, it would actually mean a raise. It would actually be mean uh, better quality of life and better living conditions, but it that it doesn't phase the, the the general public. So inflation, we need to keep that down to zero. Okay, and that was part of the platform. To do that, you need to re remove commercial banks, and we need to do it on an individual basis. So um, You might think, how is this possible? Now, if there's no commercial bank that operates under a 100% full reserve banking system, how are we gonna do this? Well, essentially, cutting the central banks out of the system, you can do it in multiple ways. I mean, you can have a shoebox full of gold and say, okay, so-and-so will lend to me money based on my assets in this shoebox. And whenever you need money, you just borrow from that person, but your assets are stay retained outside of the system. And you can't borrow more than what's in the box, right? If you have a, you know, $1,000 of gold, 
You can't borrow $2,000. That's, that's what we're trying to avoid, right? Whatever assets you have, you borrow against it. And that is the banking function. You got to increase your assets and then borrow against your assets, but never borrow more than what than, than the assets that you have. Okay, so you can do this in a shoebox. You can do this with uh, real estate. You know, uh, you could do this with Bitcoin. You know, what is it? BlockFi offers an account where you could put your Bitcoin in there and borrow against it. Okay, but there's downsides to all of these, you know, systems. First, to have a shoebox, you need someone who's going to lend you based on that whatever is in that shoebox and has to be safe. Um, not really great. Two, real estate, you're always going through this like mortgage application cycle. There's ways that you could get, make it work through maybe like a manual life one system where the lending, it's like having like an overdraft on your uh, checking and it's secured against your house. So that is a good, a good way to kind of get out of one aspect of it. Um, the other way is through uh, Bitcoin, like I just said, but the volatility is just insane. So it's kind of hard to operate um, in that system. But there is another way. And But let's just go through how this would work. Um, this book here, How Privatized Banking Really Works, it's a must read. If you're looking for it, message me and I can get you a copy. Okay, so message me and I'll get you a copy of this book. It is a great book and it'll outline in detail pretty much everything that I'm saying. Um, but it goes really into detail about how inflation works, how central banks work, because people don't know how it actually works. This bank will kind of illustrate that for you, okay? So, so this is how we do it, micro level, privatized banking, how are we going to get there? It's through Infinite Banking Concept, developed by Nelson Nash. This is not new. I didn't invent it, but it's a process. Keyword, it's a process, just like having a shoebox or whatever. It's a, sh it's a process of warehousing your money and borrowing against it. The gold, you could collateralize the gold. Real estate, you could collateralize real estate. You could collateralize Bitcoin. That creates this process of banking. You could collateralize a whole life participating life insurance policy. And it operates outside of the banking system. And you could use it, use your assets to borrow, borrow against for large purchases, to buy a house, car, tuition, okay? All those items. So how does this work? Let's go into detail. Let's go through an example of what this looks like. You're buying a car. Most people, they lease, finance, or pay cash. The person who pays cash is I, usually the person who thinks they're the smartest person in the room. They pay cash and they're very financially secure, right? There's no risk there at all. Uh, the person who finances, that's pretty much everyone because that's, um, it's not a bad way to do it. Lease, another way, but, uh, not the greatest, you're still, you're losing too much money. But that's kind of the thing. No one really goes through the IBC method, which I'm going to illustrate for you and how it's the superior way. So whether I am paying cash or financing, what is really happening? Okay. If I have to buy a car cash, I got to save, say $20,000. Okay. And then it goes up and up and up and up. I'm saving $20,000. I'm, I'm taking the bus for five years and I'm saving my $20,000. Then I'm going to buy my car after five years. My assets go down. I'm at zero. I have the car, but my cash position, zero. I, I'm going to buy a new car in five years, correct? So I'm going to have to save again for $20,000 for five years. At that point, deplete the asset goes down to zero. The person who's borrowing it's just the flip side of the coin. He's actually, at least he he gets to drive his car for the first five years, right? He borrows the 20000 and pays it back. Borrows the 20000 pays it back. They're both at zero, okay? it's They're both at zero. We're told borrowing is bad. The better approach is saving to spend. Fine. Let's, let's go with that. 
the person who saves the spends, it's the equivalent. If you were going to plant a tree at the end of five years, do you just pluck the apples or do you chop the whole tree down? That is what this person is doing. After five years, he's taking all his money and going to zero. He took an ax, he cut down this tree instead of just going up there and plucking the apples. The truth is, in order to get true wealth, it's not to be a spender or a saver, it's to be a wealth creator. Okay, and that is to create assets. Never spending the asset, never selling the asset. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. And you borrow against the asset to buy the, the goods that you want, the car, the $20,000, similar to the saver. They save $20,000, but instead of cutting down the tree, you're just gonna borrow $20,000 against your $20,000 $20, apple tree and then pay back the loan. The asset, the tree is gonna keep growing. It's gonna keep going up. You haven't cut down the tree. And through this method, you're wealthier. Big point, you're wealthier. At the end of the year, at the end of the time, you don't go to zero. Your wealth just keeps increasing. And the amount that you could borrow keeps increasing because the amount of your assets have increased. You're wealthier and you've gotten out of the banking system. You don't need the bank anymore to borrow from. You have your own assets that you're able to borrow from. But you're not using your assets. You're using the insurance company's assets. Remember, this is a whole life participating contract it's a contract you pay premiums into this contract and it keeps growing every day you're alive this is not let me let me make this clear this is not a standard policy that you'll find um, through 99% of the insurance salespeople okay this is specifically through an IBC practitioner okay I've gone through the education I've gone through the process I've implemented in my life. This is not easy to find, okay? Because many people don't think like this. There's only about 30 of us in the country that can can talk to about this concept in an intelligent manner, okay? Everyone else is going to just try to sell you a product. I'm not I'm not I'm not about the product. I'm about the process of getting out of the banking system, recapturing interest, and making yourself wealthy. Okay, that is what I'm about. And this is what this concept does. Okay, so right now you're a borrower and you're a saver. The bank takes advantage of your savings and lends it out to borrowers and you're also at the borrow in the same time. Now, what this process does is it makes you the bank, okay? So when you go to the bank, what do you do? You ask for a loan and they give you your terms, right? You have to pay it back in five years. This is the interest rate. With this process, you are the bank. So you tell yourself, when should I pay back my loan? Is it gonna be in five years? Is it gonna be in monthly installments, annual installments, bi-weekly? It's up to you. You are the bank. You make the decisions. There's no credit check. There's no application. It's your assets. You're borrowing against them. Right? So you are the bank and you make the rules. You're also the shareholder because you're in control of the process. So when you make money, when the bank makes money, it's not the branch manager that, manager that, that makes the profit. It's the shareholders of the bank that create the profit, that, that get the profit. Well, if you're a shareholder, if you're the owner of the bank, then you make the profit. You're the lender. You've capitalized your bank. You borrowed against your bank to buy a house, to buy a car. You've dictated the terms of the repayment from the borrower, which is you. And you make the interest payments within your bank. And when you make interest payments to yourself, that just recapitalizes your bank so you could borrow more in the future. 
recapturing the interest that you would have paid to outsiders. Okay? And you don't have to go to the polls for this. You don't have to elect anyone. This is this has been a concept that's been used by the wealthy for years, hundreds of years. So the mechanics is you take out a whole life participating dividend paying policy. Um, the, the cash value accumulates and there's ways to ensure that it's designed properly. And I have to stress that it has to be designed properly. So talk to me about it and I'll show you how a properly designed policy looks. Um, then you take out a policy loan. So this is the banking process, right? At first you're just creating the asset. Now you start borrowing against it to, to buy your next car, right? And then you pay back the car loan, which recapitalizes your bank to buy the next car, all the while your bank is growing and growing and growing. And then a key point to all this is that you teach this to everyone you know and your family and friends and you create a family bank eliminating the commercial banks from your life from your family's life and all the wealth stays within your family for you this generation and the next so i hope you found this helpful useful i am really passionate about this and you need to you need to give this a go Okay, you need to give this a go. If you are upset about the election, if you were putting all your eggs in one basket and thinking this is going to, um, this election is going to change things, and and maybe it will next time around. I don't know. I mean, maybe in a few years. But you can do this now. You don't have to wait for 18 months or four years or anything like that. Call me. We'll go through this all over again we could do an illustration i'll show you all about privatized banking and how you could opt out of the system and um it will definitely benefit you and the family you and your family and all the generations after you thanks for watching reach out to me with any questions um it is is a no-brainer and is a choice you need to take seriously it is it is an avenue that you really need to explore because it is a game changer. And um, anyways, I won't ramble on anymore. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.